بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Resuming with the tafsir classes We will start tonight with uh, Surah Al-Bayna Surah Al-Bayna and uh, as a reminder we would uh, mention the uh, type of surah was whether it's a Meccan or a Medinan surah and then uh, mention the names uh, of the surah or name if there is more than one name suggested by the scholars or mentioned by the scholars and then <clears throat> the reason if there's a particular reason for uh, the revelation of the surah or a given verse in the surah <clears throat> and then after that we will start the tafsir surah al bayna there's a difference of opinion amongst the scholars whether it's a Meccan or a uh, Medinan surah. Uh, Al-Qurtubi uh, stated it's a Medinan surah. Uh, and this is the opinion of the majority of the scholars uh, regarding the uh, type of surah, amongst whom uh, was Ibn Abbas. And the uh, reason they uh, decided that this is a Medinan surah uh, was <clears throat> for two things. Number one, it addressed the issue of zakah. And zakah was not mandatory, was not made an obligation upon the Muslims in Mecca. And it also addressed the people of the book and the Prophet wasallam did not have an interaction with the people of the book whilst he was in Mecca. He only came uh, in, uh, in touch with the, the people of the book, the people of the, the scriptures when he arrived in Medina and thus uh, the uh, opinion of it being a Medinan surah. Uh, the name of the surah uh, is Al Bayna. Uh, the majority of the uh, scholars of Tafsir uh, call it Surah Al Bayna. Al Bayna uh, in Arabic means uh, a clear evidence or clear proof. This is the, the meaning of the word Bayna. And it was revealed after Surah Al Talaq and before Surah Al-Hashr. Uh, however, regarding the reason uh, of revelation, there is no particular reason. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There is no particular reason why this surah was uh, revealed. Uh, however, there, there are things related to this surah. There are narrations related to the surah, not related to the reason for revelation, though. Uh, in the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, <coughs> The Prophet وسلم, said to Ubay, Ubay ibn Ka'b, and he was one of the famous companions uh, who memorized the Quran. He said, Allah Azza wa Jal commanded me to recite to you, Lam yakun illadina kafaru, Surah al -Bayna. So Ubay said, and Allah mentioned me by name? Brothers and sisters, do you realize the significance of Allah, the exalted, naming someone by his or her name to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You see the honor, you see the status of that person in the scale of Allah, in the sight of Allah. He said, was a mani and he named me by name? He said, yes. So he started crying. Radiallahu anhu. And it's an honor, indeed, for Ubay ibn Ka'b to be mentioned by name by Allah Azza wa Jal. But he deserved that. He earned that. Ubay ibn Ka'b was known to be one of those who perfected the recitation of the Qur'an. Strong memorizer of the Qur'an. Knowledgeable of the Qur'an. He possessed all these qu three qualities. Memorization, perfect recitation, and knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ said, take the Qur'an from four people. And this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, take the, the Qur'an from four people. Ubay ibn Ka'b, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, 
معاذ بن جبل and سالم رضي الله عنهم أجمعين النووي رحمة الله عليه commented on this narration saying he said the reason for the Prophet وسلم, naming these four companions in particular is that because they were amongst, this, amongst the, the companions they were those who memorized the Quran the best they could recollect it the best and they were the most perfect in Ada. Ada is reciting the Quran according to the rules of Tajweed. Now, the rules of Tajweed did not exist at the time, of course, because it was a, a natural thing that they spoke proper Arabic and pronounced the letters properly. But these four in particular were the best. And he said they were dedicated to sit with the Prophet ﷺ and memorize the Qur'an. Whenever something new came, they would go and dedicate their times. So they were dedicated to the Qur'an and thus deserve to be mentioned by name by the Prophet ﷺ. Regarding the knowledge of Ubayy ibn Ka'b anhu, in the book of Al-Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ uh, called him once by his nickname. He said, Ya Abul Munzir, O Abul Munzir, what is the greatest verse from the book of Allah that you memorize? Ubay said, out of humbleness and politeness, he said, Allah wa Rasuluhu alam. Allah and His Messenger know best. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeated the question again. And at this, he said, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. It's ayatul kursi. The scholar said the first time, he did not want to say anything out of politeness, out of humbleness. But when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeated the question, he knew that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to hear an answer. And thus, he responded, and then he said, Ubay said, the Prophet ﷺ tapped my chest and he said, May knowledge be facilitated for you. Now, when someone is being supplicated for by, by the Prophet, ﷺ, alas, he had it made. Radiallahu anhum ajma'in. Surah Al Bayna. <clears throat> Allah Azza wa says, لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين منفكين حتى تأتيهم البينة. I see the young ones repeating with me, mashallah. Excellent. Good job. Which means those who disbelieved amongst the people of the Scripture, meaning the Jews and the Christians, and the polytheists, were not to be parted from disbelief and superstitions until there came to them clear evidence. Uh, a little background, a, a, uh, let's take a, uh, a fast glimpse on the religious situation prior to the advent of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prior to the time the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was commissioned by Allah Azza wa Jal and he received the, the Qur'an or started to receive uh, the Qur'an. The, uh, <coughs> due to the time factor, the distance or the time difference between the last book revealed before the Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet Sallallahu people had diverted so far from faith Corruption uh, spread, this belief because it became overwhelming. People started worshipping idols, the polytheists, and even the people of the book altered the book and changed what Allah Azza wa Jal had sent upon Musa and Isa. As Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرٌ ابْنُ اللَّهِ 
Allah did not reveal that. The Jews said Uzair is the son of Allah. And the Christians said Isa alayhi salatu is the son of Allah. Allah did not reveal that. They altered the books. They altered the scriptures which Allah Azza wa Jal had sent upon Isa and Musa alayhi salatu wassalam. The 6th century, which is around the period the Prophet ﷺ was commissioned, uh, was the worst period in history. Uh, people forgot who the Creator was. Uh, people became deviated. Evil spread. Uh, the light that came with, the revela with divine revelations in the uh, at Torah and in Iljil had faded uh, out, had uh, been forgotten from people's hearts and minds and practices. And uh, monks and priests uh, decided to do one of the following. They either hid in their uh, churches and synagogues or to protect their faith or uh, they went with the stream and decided to uh, support the uh, disbelieving rulers uh, and help them for the sake of protecting their worldly life interests and earning some of its glitter. Uh, and thus, the polytheists and the, disbel and the disbelievers amongst the people of the scriptures uh, we're not going to <clears throat> part from that. We're not going to give this up until Allah Azza wa Jal had sent a divine, a new divine message. So people were in a dire need for a new message from Allah Azza wa Jal. So what is this bayina, clear evidence or, or proof as Allah stated in the, in the first verse? Allah says what it is. He says, Rasulun min Allahi yatlu suhufan mutahara. So the, the bayina, the clear evidence is, Rasulun min Allahi yatlu suhufan mutahara. A messenger from Allah reciting purified, meaning containing no falsehood, scriptures. Now, this is clear that the clear evidence mentioned in the first verse was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his character and his conduct, his honesty, his trustworthiness, his kindness with which he was known and famous. His noble manners were evidence to his truthfulness sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Reciting yatlu is from memory because the Prophet ﷺ was unlearned. He could not read and write. So it was from him, from his uh, memory. ﷺ. So Allah is saying, these people, the polytheists and the disbelievers of the people of the scripture, we're not going to part, we're not going to stop the evil practices of disbelief. They were upon until Allah Azza wa Jal sends Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a messenger. Yatlu Suhufan Mutahara, reciting purified scriptures, referring to the Quran. And Mutahara purified here, it's purified from having any misguidance, any contradictions any falsehood, anything evil that can be ascribed to people's writings, the Qur'an is free from it. Further description of, this, of these scriptures, the Qur'an, yani, فِيهَا كُتُبٌ قَيِّمٌ Within which are correct writings, meaning rulings and laws. So this Qur'an, As-Suhuf Al-Mutahara in verse 2 includes in it these facts, these rulings and laws. Uh, it included 
stories from the people in the past indicating and proving it being divine because the Prophet ﷺ, again was an unlearned person. He could not have mentioned anything from the past or the future unless it was divinely supported by Allah Azza wa Jal. Let us conclude the first this session here at this verse uh, and we will resume later inshallah. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu.